So, uh, the way I watch um, is the way I learned from, among other people, Adam Camden, who was one of my mentors uh, early on, uh, uh, and the, the principle is that you watch uh, whatever footage you have, you watch the whole thing once before you start looking more closely. So this is two minutes long and we're going to watch it. I want to just say as a disclaimer for the website audience that I've seen this before, unlike the other people that we recorded, uh, seeing this for the first time. I, I was in the project um, that made this recording. In fact, I was the camera person mm -hmm. for this. So I was there in the scene. Um, and uh, But I've avoided doing real microanalysis or any kind of formal transcribing um, so that I'm, I haven't, you know, completely worked up a microanalysis. But I'm, uh, I'm bringing um, some multiple reviewings to this today and also I have the background information from participant observation in the school and with this teacher before and after these lessons. This was a whole year's worth of contact with, with her and another teacher. And I'll bring some of that in, um, unlike the other people who were watching it without that information, uh, watching it for the first time. Anyway, well, it's two minutes long. We'll play the whole thing first once. Um, uh, and then we'll go back and start looking. Here we go. You ready? Yep. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. faster than life 
in both directions. Mm -hmm. And as we do that, um, we can already see something about um, two different configurations of attention and participation. Um, there's the first one that's anchored by this clear glass jar that has water in it, um, and the other jar that has sand and rocks in it, and the teacher's going to pour that in there. Um, and there's an intentional and participation structure around that focus that goes for quite a while in, in this two-minute strip. And you can see that she pours and the kids are watching that and she's talking about it and, and people are doing different things. Uh, and then, um, then her orientation changes at one minute and 20 seconds out of one minute, 59 seconds, um, to the little girl who's had her hand up for a little bit. And from then on, uh, in this, uh, the attention stays um, focally between these two who are having a colloquy with others chiming in, some listening more intently than others. Uh, but the focus is now away from the jar and on this axis. And in Kennan's terms, this is a different F formation mm -hmm from the previous one, uh, where we were focusing on the jars. And you, we can see that this is sustained all the way to the end without even knowing what, what in particular is being said, okay? So one of the other things that, that um, Kennan taught me was that when you, when you look at a whole strip, uh, a first order thing to do is find the biggest shift within that strip. Uh, and then, and sometimes there's three parts, sometimes there's four, whatever. In this case, there's two. But you can then work on each strip separately uh, to look in more detail at the talk and the uh, nonverbal behavior that's going on. And um, so that's what I'm going to do now, is go back uh, past this juncture, uh, which we might say starts when the little girl puts her hand up, uh, um, or not until there's full attention here, but at any rate, somewhere, somewhere in here there's a juncture. Mm -hmm. And this stuff, we can just see, looks very different mm -hmm. in terms of the way people's postures, gaze, uh, are organized and, and, and anchored by the jar. Um, so now let's see what's going on. Um, in the talk and the action. Um, and the other thing I, I noticed um, when Ken, I, I was interlocutor with Kendon mm -hmm. when he watched this, um, he had noticed right off the bat that Liam's finger, this is Liam, uh, was there already. Mm -hmm. And he wanted footage ahead of that to see where Liam's finger got on the, on the jar. We don't have that because we cut this for, uh, as an example for the website. But, but from the very outset, Liam's finger is there in the scene mm -hmm. as an object of attention by various people. And she's going to call attention to that, I think. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. 
Okay, and we could say. Touch. Hold on, put down there. Because right now the sand is going like this. No, it's dancing too. But you know what it's dancing to? What do you think? It's doing the popcorn. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Look at Liam's finger. Okay, now we come to Liam's finger. Um, we could say, and I think I might if I was segmenting this, you know, kind of formally, is I'd go to the end of the, the pouring. This, this whole strip of pouring stops at this point, and then she says things about what to see, uh, and then uh, eventually she remarks on Liam's finger, but again the focus is on what's going on with the sand and the rocks in the jar. And um, um, let's go back and just play that part over. Here we go, you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go, here we go. Look at how much. Okay, and as the as the jar comes off the top jar, uh, the lower jar, notice that the kids um, who were really huddled mm -hmm. here in in a in an attentional focus pattern that went on for some time upstream in time from this. Uh, notice that as the lip goes up off this, he starts to move and mm -hmm. he starts to move mm -hmm. and that particular kind of, uh, you know, flower petal uh, display of, of postural configuration is changing mm -hmm. right in, simultaneously mm -hmm. with her her movement away from mm -hmm. from from the jar. Um, so let's see what's going on with the talk. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Look at how much. Okay, and even before she says, "Look at how much," they're starting to move mm -hmm. out of out of that focus. Mm -hmm. okay. And now it's going to be dialogue mm -hmm. uh, among people, with a primary audience of the kids as a whole, but various people are saying things individually. Now there's something along the way that I had never noticed as I watched this, but when Kendon did this with me, he picked this up and, and I'll show it to you. Um, she's about to pour and... Here we go, you ready? Yep. Okay, but she doesn't pour right away. She mm -hmm. moves the glass jar in her hand toward the jar on the floor, but then pulls it back and looks over at this little girl. And look at what the little girl was doing before that. <laughs> Pretty much everybody else is looking at the jar, but the little girl is looking down at her paper. She's, they've, they've written things on, on the papers they're holding. She's still looking at the paper, and and uh, uh, Alejandra, the teacher, um, notices that, mm -hmm. looks to her, and says, "You ready?" And then she comes up mm -hmm. simultaneously, and then only then do we come to the pouring. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
So, and we can watch that with sound in real time. Here we go. You ready? Yep. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay. So, and actually, the, uh, that was an astute observation. He didn't know that um, one of the features of the teaching in these two cl adjoining classrooms where we have them on the website. Uh, the website, by the way, is called the Classroom Ecosystem Explorer. Mm -hmm. If you want to go on the internet, look for Classroom Ecosystem Explorer and you can find this as an illustrative clip. One of the, one of the uh, principles that they really practice uh, as teachers is is checking for attention and understanding among all the students. They don't let kids spend days and weeks not quite understanding something. Mm -hmm. So they're very, very good at checking evidence of kids' attention and uh, comprehension. And that, that's what that little I see mm -hmm. as that interchange being. So. So, uh, but I had never noticed that before, because I was so focused on the pouring into the jar. Look at how much. Hold up, we're gonna let it, because right now the sand is going like this, and it's dancing too. But you know what it's dancing too? What do you think? Wow. It's doing the popcorn. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Look at Leanne's finger. So, another of the things that she does pedagogically, and she's doing it here, is she animates mm -hmm. things that are in the phenomena that you're supposed to be trying to understand in the physical processes. Um, and so the, the, um, um, the, the um, um, and she invokes this metaphor of dancing and dan dancing molecules. That's about something that they're just beginning to teach. This is the, the second week uh, of October after school started in the first week of September. And uh, they're, they're moving on to a next topic. This, this idea that there are different qualities of matter, characteristics of matter, and matter occupies space is the first big topic. Then they move to matter changes state, uh, depending on the rapidity and amplitude of movement of molecules in a piece of matter. So as you add heat, the molecules dance more and more animatedly. And they've, they've already had that idea introduced, and so she's invoking dancing. But she also does a bit of dancing, like what's happening with all this stuff in the jar. And, and that's, um, that kind of kinesic illustration going along with talk is something that she does a lot of. Two. But you know what it's dancing to? Well, what do you think? It's doing the popcorn. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. When people watching this said, popcorn, what's that? At this time, a dozen years ago, the popcorn was a kid's dance. <laughs> a little kid's dance. And so that's she's playing on this. And, and uh, my colleague, Chris Gutierrez, mm -hmm. who also studied this teacher years before this was shot, mm -hmm. um, called that third space mm -hmm. invocation in teaching, playing on kids' culture knowledge, mm -hmm. popular culture knowledge within um, a classroom scene where there's formal academic content mm -hmm. also. And uh, anyway, that's... Um, 
So, but here's Liam, Liam's finger is still here, and Liam's finger and the jar are still anchoring the the focus of attention. Liam's finger. Now look at the jar and tell me where the sand is at. Move back a little bit so other people can there see. There is just what cocoa. Okay, Alexis is touching it. Put your finger there, Alexis. Okay, now look. This. Okay, one other, one other thing about Alexis. Alexis is one of the, the native uh, Spanish speakers in the room. This is a dual bilingual class. Mm -hmm. And Liam uh, comes to the class as a native uh, English speaker. And Alexis and some of the other kids uh, uh, are, uh, speak Spanish at home. Uh, and uh, the in this first part of the scene, before a little girl raises her hand, her name is Veronica. Um, the uh, the kids who speak up, you hear their voices. Those are the English speaking kids. Mm -hmm. okay? um, uh, the the Spanish dominant kids are watching. They're 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 involved. Uh, everybody's involved. Uh, this little girl over here is very intensely involved visually, and she's going to put her finger on the place where Liam's finger was in a minute. But uh, but she's uh, but 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 after Veronica starts speaking in Spanish, some of the other Spanish kids speaking kids also speak in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And that's, so that's another difference in participation structure mm -hmm. between the first half segment uh, uh, focusing on the jar and the second half focusing on the colloquy about bubbles in the Coca-Cola uh, that's introduced by Veronica. Uh, did what? Run down. It's sick. And there's another, that gesture of coming down, it sank, is another way of animating what's happening in the, the physical process that they're talking about. It did what, Liam? Rise. It, it rises. It rises, it went down, it rises, again, multimodality. Right? <laughs> Rocks. Okay, and now there's something about voice quality that I notice. I also got it with um, with the popcorn uh, thing. Uh, there are times that that with paralinguistic features, she uh, sort of puts a spotlight on her utterances. Um, uh, that's been my metaphor. Mm -hmm. The, and and that's what she's doing here too. She saying, "So we know then that matter occupies space, and it's slowing down the syllable production over time. There's a change in volume. There's a change in pitch uh, contours. Uh, a wider amplitude of pitch variation, and um, that kind of highlighting." Uh, of utterances is is again not just by accident. This is what I call uh, when I look at these kinds of lessons the punchline of the lesson. <laughs> this is the the subject matter punchline. Matter occupies space. But before that, she had already looked at Veronica. Uh, to see that she had, uh, as she's concluding the little thing about it goes down, um, as she finishes that. Uh, so we know then that yeah. matter. Yeah, well, let's go back just a little before that. It you rise. And the rocks. 
So we. Okay, and now she's now she's on the way to doing this highlighted utterance, but as she starts that, as she's saying so, Veronica's hand comes up, and she looks over. I think doesn't she? Oh, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for a moment, to she notices this in her peripheral vision. And then she looks at Veronica as a way of saying, you know, I know you're, I know you're waiting. Uh, but then she finishes this punchline because the punchline is very important, right? And the other kids um, uh, change postural position at the end of the punchline. That matter occupies space. Right? Instantly. Yeah. As she says space, they start to move into a new configuration. Mm -hmm. So something new is happening. They're telling each other uh, simultaneously as well as sequentially that something new is happening now and we don't know what it's going to be, but it's not what it was. And, and, um... Okay, you can stop. And she says to Liam, you can stop, you can take your... Your your hand your finger away, but look at what happens with her as uh, he does you that. You you wanna do what? She's holding down the the former water level mm -hmm. indicator. So she's been she's been monitoring this. I think we can say that's evidence that she's been monitoring this very mm -hmm. closely. All right, now we now we turn to. Uh, Here's our experiment. So this is what I want you to do. If you wake up in a black coca cola bar, and when you open it, it goes up. It's a tie. Do you want a coca cola? No, when it's in a coca cola bottle, and when it's in a bottle, it goes up. What is it? What is it? So what? 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 Veronica is pointing out is that. The, the bubbles in the, in, in the glass jar here with the water uh, are like what you have in a soda, mm -hmm. right? And, and then that gets revoiced by the teacher. She actually expands that to talk about the bubbles and, and, and when you shake the, the, the Coca-Cola, you, you get... Uh, you get more bubbles, and uh, he, now you notice he's looking away. Um, he's looking at his uh, something on 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 his arm. Not everybody is as tightly focused on this colloquy mm -hmm. as they were on the uh, glass jar, mm -hmm. uh, but but people are also paying attention. And the teacher is making a big deal about this offering of the idea about the, the Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola tiene una tapa de y tiene gas. Es agua con gas. Entonces, si ya se hacía la Coca-Cola, ¿qué es? Okay, and again, there's this iconic gesture of what's happening with the bubbles mm -hmm. in the Coca-Cola that's animated and and uh, she says agua con gas which is pointing to the notion that bubbles of gas gas is is matter uh, and gas occupies space as well as water occupies space that's beyond what Veronica mm -hmm. offered. It's, mm -hmm. it's an extension or revoicing, it's called in some of the literature. But, but it, 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 it's carrying on from this opening that, that Veronica gave mm -hmm. for, a, for a new topic. Um, some people also notice that before that, uh, Where is it? The teacher... I don't remember. 
somewhere in here, the teacher looked very quickly at her watch before we got into this. Oh, there, yeah. there, there is. Yeah, there's a quick. Let's see what's being said while that is happening. I think it's right after Veronica started to talk. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's as Veronica is launched into her thing, there, there's the check for the watch, and ethnographically, because I was there, I know that lunchtime is coming, mm -hmm. and that she's, she's, she's checking to see, is this something we should take a little time with or not, mm -hmm. okay? And I'll come back to that in a moment, because I know the bigger story that you wouldn't know by just watching mm -hmm. and listening. So we've got papers moving around and stuff, but people are still... People are still paying attention, mm -hmm. and, and this is a new topic. And it's a very different participation structure. Okay, and now these two guys start talking. And uh, something I hadn't noticed until we had this transcribed is that uh, they, they're, they're using Spanglish, the mixture of mm -hmm. English and, and, and Spanish, uh, in that the word they use is bubbles, mm -hmm. uh, which is an, a, bar, a long word from English. Yes. Okay, this is what I want you to do. Yeah, and the teacher uh, revoices that with the correct Spanish. Las burbujas. Burbujas. The correct form for it. Now, it's interesting that in the end of the first segment, um, there's something I noticed a long time ago a kid uh, referring to what was happening with the water. A kid says, it rised, which isn't correct grammar in, in English. Mm -hmm. And the teacher says, it rised, mm -hmm. in response. Mm -hmm. She didn't revoice and correct. She didn't mm -hmm. say, it, it rose, right? She echoes exactly what, what the kid says. So this is, the, the they're treating these two little uh, glitches in, in, in uttering uh, differently, and I don't know why, but, but, but I noticed that. Mm -hmm. um, anyway. I want you to do. Okay, now they're going to go on. She's going to tell them to f finish some writing that they're doing on these papers. And very soon after that, lunch will start. Now I'm going to just uh, stop with this. Uh, and say a couple things by way of conclusion uh, that I know uh, because I was there. Um, the, what happened was that uh, the kids spent a little bit of time working on their papers and then lunchtime came and the teacher's aide came and handled lunch while the teacher went away from the classroom. She went directly to the teacher's lounge in a building across the walkway and um, uh, where there was a, a soda machine. And she bought a can of soda and she got some little cups and she brings them back from uh, after lunch uh, and starts off the next segment of the day by pouring soda into the cups so that everybody can have a little cup of soda and drink it and feel the bubbles yeah. on their tongue, right? Now, why did she do that? 
She did that to further honor the contribution of Veronica. Uh, this is the sixth week of school, middle of October. This is the first time Veronica has ever said anything in front of the other kids that we observed. We were there. Um, we were there almost every day. Um, and the teacher told us that, that this is the first time in front of the other kids that she made a comment and uh, like this. And that was, from the teacher's point of view, her making a significant entry into the classroom as a learning community, mm -hmm. as a community of learning practice. And this teacher believes that formation of community at the beginning of the school year is essential for the way she teaches. That's what she does. She tries to establish that. Um, uh, and, and she believes that, you know, real rich learning isn't going to happen until you get everybody engaged like that. So this moment of entry of Veronica is pedagogically seen as very significant to her uh, as a teacher. She told me this right afterwards. And um, the... Um, um, the uh, uh, she, Veronica was a first grader. There are kindergartners and first graders. Most of the kindergartners were there last year. There are English uh, speakers at home, Spanish speakers at home. At the very beginning of the year, um, Veronica only spoke in Spanish. She has a little English in here. She only spoke in Spanish and only one-on-one -on -one to the teacher or to one of the, teach the teacher aide who was also bilingual. And um, there's a two dual bilingual, two-way bilingual kindergarten first grade classroom. So Veronica's entrance gets this absolutely charitable welcome, you know, the way in the child development literature we know um, you know, parents honor uh, the initial damage to utterances of infants. Mommy sock. Oh, you want mommy sock? Yes, this is mommy sock, mm -hmm. that old literature. Um, this is another kind of instance of that. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, two other things I want to say by way of concluding. First of all, just narratively, the um, um, the other thing that happened was that as they switched to Spanish, I'm standing there behind a, a, a tripod with a camera, um, I was so touched by the, the seamlessness by which this back and forth in Spanish and English was happening that I started to cry. And Alejandra looked up in this at some point and saw my tears and she said to me afterwards when I saw that I knew you were okay uh, so that's a little bit of field work uh, rapport and ethics that bears on me so we'd known each other for some time I'd actually been around her classroom in the previous year we were working together on this project to build a website that would show how they taught the physics of matter, energy, and motion with five and six-year-olds. Uh, but there was a breakthrough mm -hmm. in our relationship mm -hmm. because of the way I reacted mm -hmm. to this scene. I didn't, I didn't know at the time fully what, I got the gist that it's bubbles, you know, that are analogous to what was going on before in the demonstration. But I didn't, I didn't realize that Veronica hadn't said anything in front of the other kids. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any of that. But something in the scene told me something important was happening. And also, I was just so 
admiring what I could hear mm -hmm. in the language switching mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that was very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, the one, one other thing to say, I invoked Kendon. Um, this way of paying attention to configurations of mutual participation, mm -hmm. listening in relation to speaking, and postural positioning especially as a, as a clue to the organization of attention and how that shifts from segment to segment in events um, comes directly out of Al Shefflin, uh, who was one of Kendon's mentors, and, and also uh, William Condon, uh, the emphasis on what somebody is doing simultaneously while somebody else is doing something else in speaking or listening, Bill Condon. And then that all goes directly back to the natural history of an interview uh, pioneers uh, that included Bird Whistle and Bateson. Uh, so there, there you are. And thank you for your attention. You. <laughs> and we can stop now. <laughs>